Hi and welcome everyone. This is the Hobo Prepper and I am Friar Tuck. Okay, so I am going to be giving you some advice on how to start the Alabama Roadwalk because there are a couple of variables that you may want to consider when you're starting the Alabama Roadwalk. But before I do that, I'm going to give you some footage of some of my travels into, uh, into Alabama and crossing the line and uh, some of the cool people I met and uh, I, I will in the community section I, I'm gonna I'm gonna post a story about each of the individuals that I met and what makes them special because quite frankly um, they were awesome people uh, and uh, it was it was very good I got the help I needed when I needed it to get to where I'm going so anyways enjoy the uh, enjoy the footage and then we're gonna talk about starting the Alabama Roadwalk. So I want you to look at this. Look at all these trees around here with blue on them. Okay, blue stripes. Okay, those are not trailblazes. Okay, that, that is a trailblaze. I think it's quite confusing to be marking things with the same color as a trailblaze right on a trail. I couldn't help myself. I mean, look at how fast that is moving. So it's, being filtered fairly well uh, naturally and uh, look at how clear that is I mean you can see the bottom I mean so I, I had to fill up both of my 32 ounce pouches for my Sawyer uh, just so that I could do that I mean look at this though I mean completely dilapidated of course but you know this this was worth it man I actually feel like I accomplished something now, apparently I'm not at the exact spot, but I saw the yellow blaze and I'm like, yay, I'm on the yellow brick road. I kind of feel like Chris Farley in that movie, you know, fat guy in a little coat. But anyways, I am on the Florida, Alabama line or just like maybe a quarter mile from it. And now I get to start my road walk. Okay, now I am officially crossing the Alabama line. National Forest, all right. Now, the official road walk begins. Okay, guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the footage and some of the pictures and stuff. And again, uh, the people that I met, I'm going to be uh, giving their story in the community section. So uh, stay posted. All right, so if you, um, well, let's let's talk about when you leave the last supply point. So the last supply point before you leave uh, but before you, you leave to head towards the Alabama border, it's going to be Harold. All right. And in Harold, the little Harold store, uh, they do accept food stamps and cash and card and Apple pay and all that stuff. So, um, if you're like me and you're running on food stamps, uh, that is a good resupply point. Um, <clears throat> Now that's going to be the last place that you hit before you get to the Alabama border. And, uh, you know, just to kind of give you some other advice, it, it says like I, when I was at the state park, I, I Googled to see how far it was to the Alabama border. It's like, oh, it's 26 miles. I'm like, oh yeah, I should be able to make that in a day and a half tops. It took me two and a half days, actually two days and like an hour and a half of uh, really hard walking. I think I did somewhere close to 40 miles or more uh, just to get to the border. Once I got to the border, oh, and one other thing, if you are needing a camp spot along the way, uh, such as, uh, you know, you, you've passed the shelters and you get to Hurricane Lake, there is a state campground there. If you want to be able to get a shower or have a place to camp and stuff like that, uh, I would suggest calling ahead because once you leave Harold, uh, you're, you're really not going to get any signal until you get out of Conica Forest, uh, which is in Alabama. So I have barely had any signal for about five days now. So anyways, just something for you guys to consider when you're planning your Eastern Continental Trail uh, to the Alabama Roadwalk. Now, once you cross into Alabama, which is completely awesome, uh, it was, it was a, a happy moment for me. And it didn't last long, but it was a happy moment for me. Um, what ended up happening was, uh, so I contacted the Pinhoti Outdoor Center. They are a hostel on mile 21 of the Pinhoti Trail. 
you want to contact them through Facebook, they'll uh, messenger you a phone number, you call the phone number, you talk to the person, they'll give you resources, and then you uh, will end up texting them your name and your email so that they know, because you're going to want to stop by there. I mean, it's only, you know, I mean, considering they're giving you a GPX file. Now, I am using GPX Viewer through my iPhone, and, uh, you know, it's free. So, I mean, you got to deal with what the setbacks of a free software is. However, um, <coughs> make sure that you parse it out into separate trails and you don't try and do it as one because otherwise it, it won't work for you. And that was the complications that I had. So once I got across the border, you know, you start on this little road walk and I met a couple of guys and they're asking me, have you seen any turkeys? I'm like, did I just cross the border? No, I haven't seen any turkeys because uh, apparently it is turkey season. Uh, getting prepared for Thanksgiving early, I guess. Uh, but anyway, so you're going to you're gonna walk up a, a, a dirt road until you get to a paved road. And then you're going to walk down there. Now, I made the mistake because partially uh, I didn't have much battery uh, on my phone. And I was still figuring out how to use the GPX viewer. So instead of taking a left, so here's here's where you get to make a choice, okay? So you can you can either take a left on 311 and keep following the trail, okay? And you'll follow the trail until you get to 137. Once you get to 137, if you'd like a place to, to be able to stay and maybe even take a zero day and get some respite because of how long you've been in the forest, well, you can... Uh, uh, it, if you take a right once you reach 137, if you're on trail, it's about an hour to an hour and a half walk. Uh, so let's just say about three, three and a half miles to the uh, to the uh, open pond uh, park. Now it's eight dollars for a primitive site, sixteen dollars for a uh, for for a hookup site. And, uh, you know, that's if you want to be able to have water and stuff like that. Now, they do have showers and stuff like that, but you have to have cash. They don't take card. Uh, the, the camp hosts do not have any change. So you need to have exact change on you when you are looking at uh, when you're looking at this part. But uh, I ended up staying there uh, because I made uh, a mistake uh, along the way because, I, like I said, I couldn't follow the GPX viewer. Uh, because I kind of screwed it up myself. So the alternative route. So uh, I, when I saw the only video about the Alabama roadwalk, when I saw that, uh, I was uh, the guy's like, yeah, there's there's plenty of gas stations. You know, don't worry about. You don't need more than a day's worth of food. So I only packed three days worth of food when I uh, resupplied at Harold. Well, you know what? That uh, that was my mistake because yeah if you if you go through the forest it's another two days before you get to uh, Carolina which is the other end of the forest one and two uh, it's the it's the first gas station you're going to meet on trail so you need to be able to plan that uh, and and be thoughtful about how you uh, about how you you do your food because this is probably going to be the hardest part of the trip for you, at least in the beginning, when you start the Alabama Roadwalk, leaving the Florida Trail. Um, so I ended up going into Bradley. So instead of taking a left at 311, I just kept going, went into Bradley, found out that I had to walk another seven miles to Wing, which takes you again to 137. And then um, there is a, uh, a Sitco gas station there. Okay, they have uh, they have plenty of food. You can resupply. Um, I like rice, uh, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about that. If you're um, a subscriber to Patreon, I will talk about the benefits of rice and how it is uh, helping me and kind of the energy it gives me and all this other stuff. But if you don't want to do that, experiment with rice on a long walk and see how it affects your body. It's fun. It's, yeah, it's just fun. Um, but anyways... So I made it to the Sitco, but uh, luckily there was a 40% chance of rain that turned into a 100% chance of rain. I was like, okay, I resupplied. I'll just walk the uh, the six or seven. I just more like uh, uh, close to 10 miles to go from the Sitco 
to reconnect with the trail on 137. Now, um, uh, it, at first, it's like it was just starting to rain. It's like, okay, it's not that bad. I don't have to worry about it. All that stuff. Well, uh, yeah, that was my mistake. I crossed the street. I walked probably maybe 100 feet down the road to go back into the forest so I could, you know, pitch a tent. And, uh, yeah, the raindrops were so big and it came down so hard, you couldn't see more than maybe 10 feet in front of you. I never been, I haven't been this drenched since I was a kid. It was a flash flood. It was something else. But anyways, with that being said, uh, luckily a guy gave me a ride up to the, uh, gave me a ride up to the, uh, uh, the open pond state park or no, it's a, it's a U.S. force. It's not a state force. It's a U.S. force. So the rules are a little bit different there. So be prepared. And Florida and Alabama, their park rules are much different and feds are also much different. But anyways, uh, so once I, once I left there, um, I made it up to the trailhead on, uh, on 137. And that's where you see me at right now as I just got into the trailhead. And, uh, you know, it seems uh, seems pretty nice, you know, uh, but I got to keep an eye on my GPS viewer after I'm done with this video. But anyways, uh, just to make a, a long story short, you have two choices. You can either go into wing uh, if you don't have enough food, if you don't want to carry enough food uh, or whatever. Because, I mean, I, I'm doing uh, now that I figured out my walking schedule and kind of how to keep my energy uh, I uh, am doing at least 20 miles a day. Like in the in the three days of walking, I did over 60 miles. So uh, it's not like I've been, you know, just like moseying along at like 10, 15 miles a day. I'm actually putting some serious miles on my feet now. And uh, so it is a, a somewhat serious trek. But again, you don't, uh, you don't get out of the Conica uh, forest, which is again, a US forest. Uh, managed by uh, the Forest Service. You don't get out of there until just before you hit Carolina, and then that's supposed to be where you hit the first gas station. Uh, now, you know there are there is supposed to be another gas station along four uh, if you take 311 up, but the guy told me I had to cross the river, which I wasn't 100 percent sure of. But anyways, guys, hey, you know how to help the channel. Like, subscribe, share, become a member of Patreon. Leave me a tip in the tip jar if you find this uh, valuable. Otherwise, uh, I will see you in the next video.